Deputy Chief Likens from the Fire Department, uh, City Manager Shelley Dickstein, City Commissioner Chris Shaw, um, Dr. Greg Seaman, uh, trauma from Miami Valley Hospital, and Elizabeth Long from Kettering Health Network. Where's the is pastor? He's, he's on the other, he's on the other. Oh, I'm sorry, Pastor, I can see you. Pastor Rick Traberks from the Police and Community Together are packed. So I'm going to repeat some of the things I said this morning just to give some information. At 107 this morning, this event occurred in uh, our historic Oregon district. Uh, the suspect was wearing body armor and used an AK like gun assault rifle, 223 caliber, with high capacity magazines, and he had additional magazines with him as well. Uh, we had 10 fatalities, including the shooter. That number is still the same from um, this morning. Uh, and um, we have had, uh, the hospitals have had 27 people treated and 15 discharged as of 10 o'clock this morning. In less than one minute, Dayton first responder, uh, responders neutralized the shooter. Uh, I'm just still completely amazed at the her heroic nature of our police department uh, where they uh, did a first aid, uh, stopped a shooter with under a minute, and so we were grateful for their service. If you are a family or friend of a victim and have questions, you can call 937-333-8430 uh, uh, or come to the Convention Center. Uh, and if you have any information on the incident as this incident is ongoing, please call 937-225-6217. Uh, we are grateful for all of the supporters and folks helping us from the American Red Cross, Gadaha, the FBI, ATF, etc. Uh, the Community Blood Bank is supporting the hospitals and we are working with them to set up a blood donation opportunities. We will have more information about that in the coming hours. At 8 p.m. tonight, the community will hold a vigil for the families and those that have lost their life. We'll have a, a location for you again in the coming hours. The Oregon District will be open coming this afternoon in the early afternoon. Okay, um, I'm going to let some folks speak and then we'll do questions. Uh, first, I'd like to have Dr. Seaman come forward and make a few more remarks. Thank you, Mayor Whaley. Again, I'm Dr. Greg Seaman. I'm a trauma surgeon at Miami Valley Hospital, which is a level one trauma center uh, for the greater Dayton region. Uh, our facility activated our mass casualty incident plan around 1.30 a.m. this morning uh, in association with the mass casualty uh, incident here in downtown Dayton uh, that mobilized uh, our entire team. Our facility received a total of 16 patients, uh, of which 12 have already been treated and released. Uh, we do have a total of four patients that are currently admitted, and one remains in critical condition. Uh, some of those patients have undergone or will undergo surgery uh, later today. Um, we are continuing to support uh, many families who are arriving at our facility, um, and our thoughts and prayers are certainly with all of those families. Uh, we worked in conjunction um, with other facilities in the area to identify, treat, um, and uh, communicate information in a timely manner to these families. Thank you. All right, next we'll have uh, Elizabeth Long, who's from Kettering Health Network. Good morning. Kettering Health Network is a health system with nine hospitals. Uh, we received patients at three of our nine hospitals. Uh, Grandview Medical Center, which is in Dayton, uh, received the most. We had nine people treated. Uh, seven were brought in by squad and two walked in. Of those nine patients, uh, three are in uh, serious condition, three are in fair condition, and uh, three were treated and then discharged. Uh, two were taken to surgery immediately. Uh, one person is still being considered uh, for surgery. Uh, the injuries ranged from uh, gunshot wounds to the lower extremities, to uh, uh, abdominal wounds. Uh, one person came in for um, a laceration uh, to a foot that happened uh, during, the, uh, during the chaos right after, right after that incident. 
at Kettering Medical Center, our flagship hospital, one person was brought in and is in serious condition. And at Soin Medical Center, two people uh, were brought in and were treated and then released. Uh, we uh, want to commend our, uh, our hospital staff, all the way from our ER physicians and nurses and technicians to the people who came in uh, right away when we called the code yellow, uh, alerting people that, um, uh, that we um, uh, needed uh, backup. Uh, we want, just want to commend them for the, uh, for the great job they did. Also commending uh, City of Dayton Police and uh, first responders. So we know they're on the first line and, and they're the first line of treatment for people coming in. So we just wanted to, to uh, commend them for uh, a job well done. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We have an organization that we work with when we have incidents uh, called Police and Community Together or uh, uh, Clergy, I'm sorry. Thank you. Police and Clergy Together. Pastor, I'm having a hard time. Um, your prayers, please. Uh, and so we'd like to have Pastor Burks come forward and say a few words about, about uh, the clergy's perspective. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, we just want to say, uh, as already been stated, uh, our prayers and thoughts are with all the victims um, and their families. Second, uh, we do want to just really uh, acknowledge the police department, Dayton Police Department, their quick response. Uh, uh, we we're very thankful for that and first responders. On behalf of PACT, we just want to let the community know that we've been here from the start. Uh, we've been counseling um, family members. Uh, we have a variety of resources. Uh, we are here and we will remain here. So um, we just want to let you know that uh, this is a community uh, effort and we're doing everything we can to help out in a situation like this. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, guys, questions? Yes. Well, certainly it's a Sunday, so some of the businesses were are you know are typically some of them are, take Sunday and Monday off because it's mostly local. But um, it's up to each business if they want to open. The street will be open this afternoon. Mayor, what do you say to folks who might be hesitant to go back down to the Oregon district? Look, it, the Oregon district is one of the safest places in the whole region. Um, you know, these uh, senseless acts of violence that occur um, have been happening uh, any place, and I don't mean to scare people, but frankly, I mean, we're at a situation now in our country that um, you're really, you know, th these are so random, there's no place that, you know, you could say, oh, I just don't want to ever go anywhere. So as far as the safety of the, the, the district, it's, it's one of the safest places in the whole region. Is anyone that's still the hospital that um, I don't think we have that information yet. You know, as we get more updates, we'll continue to continue to update you. Mayor, now what can you tell us about uh, the, the initial confrontation? Were there some security members from some businesses in the Oregon District who actually either recognized the shooter or noticed something out of place and went out and confronted the shooter before he could get in those businesses? We don't have any of that information to, to report on yet at this time. As we continue to get information about the, the shooting, we will certainly tell you, but we don't have any of that information yet. Have Mayor? you personally been able to talk to the victims? I have not. We've had folks that have been reaching out to victims as they've come in, and I plan on um, um, see, meeting with um, those that are able. I mean, they're going through a very difficult time in the coming hours. Do we know that? We don't know that for certain. We're in the process of that. Now that this has sunk in a bit, what are your thoughts personally? Look, I mean, <laughs> Dayton uh, has gone through a really tough year. Uh, uh, three months ago, early in the morning, the day after uh, Memorial Day, I think uh, we had not quite this many cameras, but a discussion about uh, 14 tornadoes that rav ravaged our city. Uh, and now to, you know, be awakened in the middle of the night to a, um, a mass shooting and the 250th shooting in our country this year happening in Dayton. Um, what, what really goes through my mind is one seems completely preventable and um, you know I just want I, I just question when is enough enough uh, and so you know as we're continuing to do everything we can for the victims for our community um, for families uh, 
you know, that's where our focus is and it will continue to be there. Uh, and I continue to be amazed about the grit and resiliency of this community, uh, the challenge that it has taken on, uh, on just in the past few months and the love and support that comes from people is um, uh, something that keeps me going as mayor and makes me so proud to do this work. Can you tell us how many shots were fired in Oregon District? And can you tell us what end did the shooter come in? Was it from Patterson or from Wayne? Just stand next to me. I, I can, um, at some point, we'll be able to tell you uh, exactly how many shots were fired uh, by officers and exactly how many shots were fired by the suspect. But, uh, but I can't give you that information just yet. There were the, uh, multiple the, rounds. What about the direction that he walked in, drove in? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to, uh, to more details uh, at in a later conference, but, uh, but for this conference, I can't release that just yet. We're still early in the business. What about the shooter himself? Uh, where he's from? Did you identify he's from Dayton or Miami Valley? We have identified the suspect, and we will get that information to you soon. Uh, we are, we're in, in our investigative process, and that takes precedence. Uh, we understand uh, that, uh, that, that the public uh, wants to know who this person is, and that will be uh, released. And obviously, we're, uh, we're working very hard to, uh, to give the public an answer as to what the motivation might have been for this event. There's a question about an accomplice. Did you guys hear anything about that, or did you investigate a second shooter? We're investigating uh, all, uh, all information, all leads, and, uh, and we'll go where the, uh, where the evidence takes us at this point. Uh, we're aware of, of one shooter. What, we'll get more of that information to you. I can, I can tell you, uh, like the mayor said earlier, this is a uh, this was a, a, a 223 rifle with a with a high capacity magazine and extra magazines uh, um, on this person. There are other, other events happening tonight in this area. Is it considered safe to come to those conferences? Yes, of course. Uh, you know, we have just just like um, we have uh, police support quickly in the district, uh, we'll continue to have uh, folks around. And look, you know, we're, um, we're pleased. We know the community wants to come together. So for this 8 p.m. vigil, we know we'll have that site coming. There was about, I was in the Oregon district at Pepper's Friday. There was probably- What were you doing there? I can't take it. There were probably eight officers mm -hmm. in and around. Mm -hmm. Ned Pepper. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, how many officers were, were there the same amount of officers last night as there was Friday? You should just stay by me. I, I, I will. Okay. Uh, there, were, uh, there were several officers uh, who were working uh, in the Oregon District in the immediate vicinity, uh, which is, you know, we're, we're all very fortunate that they were there and they were able to, uh, uh, to shorten this timeline of violence to, uh, to less than a minute. And um, we, uh, we regularly have officers um, uh, specifically assigned to, uh, to the Oregon District. It's a high concentration uh, of people, and uh, we want to make sure that everybody stays safe. So that's our goal. So that's why we, we, uh, we typically have officers uh, patrolling there, especially around uh, 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 the bar times. Chief, we know that you're limited as to what you can tell us, but uh, you keep referring to a he, at least. Can you tell us, man, woman, young, old, race, anything? We'll get more information to you. Yeah, yeah, yes. I can tell you the uh, the investigation. You know, right now takes takes precedence over uh, over people knowing. I, you know, knowing immediately. Uh, the the public will be uh, will be told who this person is, and uh, it's it's important for us to try to establish um, uh, uh, to try to identify all the evidence and uh, and possible motivation in this in this crime because I think the the, the victims. Uh, the families of the victims need to know that, so that's the, uh, the priority. Have you seen in the last hour and a half any traces of possible hate crime? I know we've got a lot of the families seem to call it. I have no information on that. Has his family been notified? Um, I can't tell you that. The, uh, the coroner's office uh, provides the notification to Mexican. Will there be extra security tonight in the Oregon District? Uh, there, there's always security in the Oregon District. Can we have the man from uh, Miami Valley back? What kind of help are they getting? I'm sorry? How many people come to the Family Assistance Center here, and what kind of assistance are they getting? I don't have a count on the number of people that have come. We've had a pretty um, steady 
uh, uh, group of you know folks coming in and out. Um, and you know, of course, uh, as as families are notified, um, we immediately make sure that they have the support that we can offer with um, um, coping and other issues. But also have to have a victim advocate for each uh, each family is in uh, is put in place as well. Oh yes, I'm sorry. And uh, thank you. And the police and clergy together in PACT have been at every single one of these as well. Well, I think the most important thing for people to know is what a resilient and gritty city we are. Um, and I use those ter terms affectionately. Uh, we have seen a lot of um, um, issues in our community. And what amazes me about this city, and this is this, uh, you know, this tragic incident is no different, is how quickly our community to comes together, how our community is so connected, and how um, just the number of people want to do something. Uh, and, you know, we saw this in May after the tornadoes. We see this again today. Uh, and then I think the other thing, uh, for, you know, I think I met like, you know, over 50 mayors across the country who have reached out because sadly this isn't something that only the city of Dayton has experienced. And um, what's, what's really um, uh, shocking to me is just the number of people that have um, personal experience of this going in, on in their communities, and um, it's, it's, it's sad to me that now Dayton is one of those communities as well. Mayor Whaley, have you talked to the president, or have you seen the tweet that you concerning this? I did see the, uh, the tweet, and uh, uh, the press, the, I think the White House um, office has called us, I have, correct? Yes, the White House office has called my cell phone. I was on another call at the time, but we have talked to the White House um, and but not not the president specifically. I've talked to Senator Brown and Governor DeWine as well. Oh, I'm sorry. And oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. And Representative Turner has called me as well. Are you aware this is like a copycat from Saturday? I can't speculate on that, frankly. We'll have more information uh, in the coming hours, and we'll you know I don't want to speculate on any of that. I can't. I can't really communicate on that until we have a name for you guys. Can we have the doctor back up? I do have one question about the shooting scene. If I could do that. Yes, you're like becoming a regular reporter for Dayton. Yeah. It's um, good to see you. Were the fatalities all on the street, on the sidewalk? Were there any fatalities in the club? Can you clarify that? Yeah, I can tell you the uh, all the fatalities were outside. Okay. And injuries. Correct. I can't speak to that just yet. On, on the scene, it appeared that the evidence markers were kind of going down the street, pretty 20, 30 yards from each other. I mean, can you clarify if you guys think he was going from bar to bar or if there was a car to police at all? We can't really comment on any of that right now. Yeah, we will be able to uh, to let you know, just uh, that won't be right now. The shooting is instead of the outside of that is that accurate that it was outside of that building? It's in the Oregon District outside. Sure. So um, our next press conference will be at 1 p.m. You know, and like we can't tell you what we're going to say. We try to learn as much as we can. We try to tell you at that time. So at 1 p.m. today. Just a real quick on law enforcement and uh, state police departments. What are they handling? Is this an all call situation for the department? Is it, yeah. You guys have done a lot of the initial work and all the federal investigators handle it. What's kind of a, uh, how are the tasks? And forgive me, I, I, I didn't catch the first part of that question. I, I will say this, the, uh, uh, the Dayton Police Department is conducting the, the investigation. We've had um, um, a lot of assistance from uh, outside resources. FBI has been here from uh, 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 very soon after the incident occurred, and, uh, and they've assisted with the investigation. So there are a lot of resources that, uh, that other agencies and organizations have provided, and that will all be included in this investigation. Um, I, I can also add that um, uh, after the 1 o'clock, we are um, uh, confident we'll have a uh, uh, news briefing at, at 3 o'clock where we can provide a little bit more information as far as the, uh, the investigation goes. Uh, it may not be all the answers just yet, but, uh, but we'll try to get as many to you as we can. And I did want to thank um, uh, all of the, uh, the other uh, agencies who responded. This is a mutual aid uh, event when something like this happens, so we had uh, 
we had uh, police officers from uh, uh, all surrounding uh, jurisdictions, uh, as well as uh, uh, the fire response, Dayton, uh, Dayton Fire Department uh, response, and there was a mutual aid uh, request there, so uh, there were medics from uh, from a lot of other jurisdictions too. So uh, we appreciate everyone's uh, assistance in this response. Were all of the injured treated for gunshot wounds, or were there other injuries? We can't really talk about that right now. So gave you the numbers about how many were injured and how many have been discharged. So we could have the man up from Miami Valley real quick. Yes. So can you talk about uh, the? Uh, what you were treating at Miami Valley, um, the person from Kettering was able to talk about what types of injuries they were treating. We treated a combination of gunshot wounds as well as injuries from people who were fleeing the scene. That's all the information I can give you at this time. Can, can you tell us uh, anything about the gunshot wounds? Multiple gunshot wounds per person, uh, upper body, anything? Some victims that sustain multiple gunshot wounds. That's all the information I can give at this time. I can't speak to that. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't. We don't have like all of the information to share with you. Um, I think preliminary. It seems to be a diverse group of people. I mean, I mean, I mean about the deceased. It's a diverse group of people. Yeah, we'll have that later in the afternoon. All right, I appreciate you all and your coverage. We'll see you back here at one. If we have more information, when we have what we what information we'll have, we'll give it to you at one. And um, thank you for keeping uh, the prayers of the community of the city of Dayton in your hearts and thoughts. Thank you.